we hear from former NBA star Dennis Rodman on why he calls North Korean dictator Kim Jong-un his friend. Rodman last visited the closed-off country the same day American Otto Warmbier, held by the brutal regime for 17 months, was released to his family. Rodman's team says that was no coincidence. Tonight we explore the seemingly bizarre relationship between the despot and the basketball star and learn more about Otto, who died with severe brain damage just days after returning to the U.S. Here's ABC's Bob Woodruff. As we prepare to leave Wyoming High School, it feels like saying goodbye to a close friend. They're the prophetic words of the late Otto Warmbier, saying a final goodbye to his graduating class. But there's also a different kind of goodbye, a farewell to something larger than just a friend. Just four years later, at that same high school, it would be his family and friends who would bid him farewell. He was just like full of eternal optimism and hope. I think he was a gift to all of us. He was a one of a kind, but he inspired us all. Mourners paying their respects to the 22 year old whose promise seemed limitless. To now have the opportunity to explain what type of a guy he was um, and what he meant to us, each one of us, we're just really grateful for that because he was just the best guy. On display at the funeral, the quiet testimonies of Otto's belongings, shoes, his wallet, his passport, relics of a journey that began with hope and ended in horror. It's just unacceptable and unthinkable. It's a nightmare, really. Thousands in attendance, all trying to make sense of what happened to the American tourist who for 17 months was detained in North Korea. This video sparking a series of events that ended with this college junior losing his life. North Korean officials say this is the then 21-year-old allegedly attempting to steal a propaganda poster from a hotel in Pyongyang. At the airport, me and Otto were the last two through the security, and he had to simply had a tap on the shoulder. Danny Gratton was Otto's roommate during the trip. Two guards took him away. And I sort of laughingly said to him, well, that's the last we'll ever see of you. And because we got on so well, Otto turned around and just chuckled at me. Grattan says that was the last time he saw Otto. Please save my life. Please think of my family. What followed was Otto's tearful so-called confession and a sentence to 15 years of hard labor a 17-month saga that would eventually bring him back to U.S. soil. North Korea claims Otto had fallen into a coma, but American doctors say it was unresponsive wakefulness. Otto suffering from extensive loss of brain tissue, unable to walk, talk, or respond to verbal commands. And I'm able to talk to you on Otto's behalf, and I'm able to wear the jacket that he wore when he gave his confession. On Monday night, Otto passed away, his family alleging he endured torture that led to his death. But today, North Korean officials denying that they cruelly treated or tortured Otto, stating, we provided him with medical treatment and care with all sincerity of a humanitarian basis until his return to the U.S. The mystery behind his death adding to the already tense situation between the United States and North Korea. Negotiations to free American prisoners have mostly been kept under wraps, leaving a selective few with rare access into the Kim Jong-un regime. Individuals like former NBA player Dennis Rodman, who has become the United States' most visible unofficial diplomatic presence. They sort of open the door. Just open the door, that's it. Last week, Rodman made his fifth visit to North Korea. The same day he arrived, Otto was released. I didn't know that I was, I was the one supposed to go over there and get him out. Rodman and his agent, Chris Volo, who accompanied the former NBA player on his trip, sat down with ABC's Michael Strahan for the first interview since their return. Otto Warmbier was released the same day that you went to North Korea. Give all the prayer and love to his family, you know, but I didn't know he was sick. But he wasn't sick. When he went there, he was fine. A year later, the same day you go over, he's released in a coma, and he passes away less than a week later. 
And this, and, but this is in a place that you said this guy who runs this place is your friend. How can that happen and you still have these feelings and a sentiment? Well, you know, you see me just saying, oh my God, this guy's my friend. Guess what? I, I'm going to die for this guy. No, it's not like that. I don't look at the political side about him. Mm -hmm. Do you think being there had anything to do with it? I, think well, I, I know being there had something to do with it because when I was organizing the trip, um, and I meet with the delegates here, I addressed Otto Warren Beer, and I said to them, we would need some type of good faith if we're ever going to do some type of future sports relation. I asked three times. Before you went. Before we went. Uh -huh. I asked on behalf of Dennis for his release. They said they understood. That was all that was said in that meeting. The same day that you go in, he's released. Do you look at that and think, maybe we're being used here? Maybe we're a distraction from that? You know, I have. But there's no doubt in my mind that these trips and me asking on his behalf was the, had a lot to do with it. Otto's father said, "Dennis Rodman had nothing to do with Otto. It's try, it, you know, it's a diversion. You know, they just released Otto. It's a diversion." We wanted to meet with him when we came back. Yep. You know, but we were told that you know it just couldn't happen. Have you talked to anybody there and said what happened with this kid? No, we haven't heard anything. But it's just mysterious, Dennis. A 21-year-old healthy kid, all of a sudden he's in a coma. That's not normal. Something apparently happened. No one wants to say what happened, but something happened. Well, like I said, I'm not into all that. Like I said, I was just so happy to see the kid release. Later that day, that's when we found out he was ill. No one knew that. I was just so happy. I said, oh, he got released. I said, yeah, as we jumped up and down. All right, man, all right. Some good things came out of this trip. Okay, great. So with, with three more Americans being held over there, are you gonna lobby for their release as well? If we, we could get more trips going over there, I think anything is possible. It's possible. You know? Why did both of you do something that is so controversial? I'm like a you know, controversial person. I love it. You know, controversy makes bad, negative, and good publicity for everybody in the world. People t today would do anything on TV just to be on TV. Is that part of your motivation, though, to be on TV, or? No, play this, I don't need to be on TV. I'm too damn famous for this. I'm not trying to sound cocky. It was like, my God, what am I, what am I getting out of this? I'm going over there out of my kindness of my heart just to try to help. And next thing you know, I come back, wow, what I do that's so bad? I'm not here to sit there and say, okay, I gotta be. I can't, I can't. It just sucks. So, you know, with that being said and seeing you get emotional, do you think these trips you've taken have been worth all the criticism? Absolutely. I think it's worth it. The State Department sees his involvement differently. Dennis Rodman had nothing to do with the release of Mr. Warmbier. Otto was not the only American being held in North Korea. Secretary Tillerson this week has demanded the return of three American prisoners who remain in the country. Governor Bill Richardson, who runs a foundation aimed at rescuing political prisoners, so nice to see you. personally met with the North Koreans to free Otto. North Koreans uh, stiffed me. They never said yes, they never said no. Otto was in a coma and they didn't want anybody to know. The former governor has a stern warning to the estimated 1,000 Americans traveling to North Korea every year. Don't go to North Korea if you're an American tourist. You don't need to go there. Go somewhere else. There's too dangerous. And you may end up like Otto Warmbier, uh, unjustly killed. And this is a, a human being detained, 21 years old, with a great family, a grieving family. North Korea should not get away with this. And as America mourns Otto's death, I wish there was a way to know that you're in the good old days before you've actually left them. Back at his high school, his friends remember his bright spirit. He said, we'll always have each other talking about our class. And I think now more than ever, that's really, really showing to be true. And I would want that. And we'll have the big rerun, the memories we've created to be played over and over again. Thank you. For Nightline, I'm Bob Woodruff in New York.